Hey you guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about what to sew in January in containers. So let's get straight into it. It may be January but my balcony garden is still thriving. I have a perennial garden but I also have a container vegetable garden. So my what to sew videos will contain flowers to help attract wildlife to your garden but also seeds to help you grow your own veg. Now, most of the lettuce on my garden are actually invaders. <laughs> They're all volunteer lettuce. And everything that I've tried to grow myself just hasn't gone to plan. But what I will be doing is I'm going to be sowing some more lettuce from seeds this year. Now, you're looking for varieties like Winter Gem. They should do pretty well. Because you have to bear in mind that our last frost date in the UK is March, April. So you want something that's going to be able to take the frost. In fact, for me, what I'm going to be doing with my lettuce is I'm going to be growing them in one of these containers that you see up here. A lot of winter variety plants, they actually taste a lot better once they've had a bit of frost. So I'm going to put them in a container like this one so it's above the glass that way it will get hit by the frost whereas actually the lettuce that has volunteered down here are actually summer varieties of lettuce so I'm keeping these guys where they are so that they get protected by the glass that I have up on the balcony. Now's the perfect time to start your cauliflower. Now with your cauliflower you're going to be sowing them now to have an early summer harvest. So the variety that I'm choosing to grow for summer is all year round variety. I'm going to leave links below so that you can pick up the seeds as well. But I'm going to be sowing these indoors. Again, I'm going to do another video and show you exactly how I start off some of these brassicas. Let me show you some that I've got at the end of the garden. Currently, I've got broccoli, cauliflower, dinosaur kale, curly kale and cabbage. Another one of the brassicas that I'm going to be seed sowing in January are kale and also cabbage. Now I've already got plenty of cabbage and kale <laughs> at the end of the garden. For me I'm trying to achieve a level of self-sufficiency so what I do is I use the cut and come again method with some of these brassicas. Uh, essentially what that means is very rarely let the plant grow to its fullest. I harvest the leaves as and when I'm making a salad for example. As you'll see with some of the kale that I have at the end of the garden I've just been picking at it and taking whatever it is that I need. So I'm starting some more indoors so that eventually I can replace the ones that I've got out there when these guys on the garden have reached the end of their life. I'm also going to be growing some beetroot in January. Now with the beetroot I'm not actually growing the beetroot for the veg itself, I'm simply growing it for the salad leaves. I actually sowed some in December so let me show you what they look like now. It's taken about two and a half weeks for these guys to germinate so I can't wait to see their progress. In my last what to sow video I mentioned growing sweet peas. Now I grew these sweet peas in this tray and I put around about two to three in each module. Of the 20 modules only five of them have actually germinated so what I'm going to have to do is do another sowing in January of sweet peas and these ones I'm going to plant these out today on the cloud garden. We're also going to be sowing some snapdragons. In my latest video I visited Knockcut's garden centre and I found this variety. It's called Madam Butterfly Mix. Start them off indoors in January and they will flower by July. But it'll be worth the wait because these guys get pretty tall. These guys get up to almost 90 centimeters. So I think that this will make a really, really great backdrop to have along my balcony pond area. I also have some hollyhocks that are growing around the balcony pond area. So not only will I have the hollyhocks, I'll have the snapdragons as well. And that should make for a really, really beautiful backdrop. As you can see, I think the addition of snapdragons to this setting will look absolutely stunning. One of my favourite plants last year was Achillea. Last year I visited RHS Tatton Park and also uh, the Royal Chelsea Flower Show for the first time. And I was able to pick up some Achillea from Tatton Park I think it was for one pound and they absolutely blew my mind and my pollinators absolutely loved it so I thought this year I would give it a go and grow them myself so I picked up a pack from Sutton's and again you sow these in January and hopefully 
fingers crossed, they will be flowering by August. Another plant that I'm going to be sowing in January is canary creepers. Now, I actually had a different variety um, that was growing on the cloud garden last year. It is absolutely beautiful. It got hit by a frost and it, essentially it's almost dead. However, I've just looked at it today and there's still plenty of green on it and I'm confident that it's going to make a return this year. So I thought I would make a nice display as well to have some more climbing vertical plants up in the cloud garden. I think one of my plans is, is to also increase the number of trellises that I have along the garden so I get a lot more vertical growth. In the next week or so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compile all of my seed sowing for my herbs and do one long video for you guys just so you can see how I start my herbs so that you can follow along with me as well. Now one of the first things I'm going to be growing in January are herbs. Now with my herbs, I'm going to be starting them all off indoors. Now I've got these racks and I've also got some grow lights on there as well. But you don't need any of this stuff. All you need is a sunny window. The first herb that I'm going to be growing in January on the cloud garden is sweet Thai basil. Now Thai basil is a half hardy annual and that's just like a fancy word of saying Cha, if this thing gets some frost on it, it's gonna die, okay? Guys, right, just imagine me presenting <laughs> Gardener's World. <laughs> That's important to know. So I'm starting this in January. I'm gonna be starting it indoors, but some of this I'm going to keep on my indoor herb garden and I'm going to chance it and I will put some out a little bit later on onto the cloud garden. In the UK, my last frost date is around about March, but we never know here in the UK. So it could be April. I'm going to take a chance and put some stuff outside and hope that the glass on the balcony will stop my containers from freezing over. But you know, if the plants do get damaged by the frost, it's fine because I will have got some plants inside. This is why I'm starting a little bit earlier. It's going to be exactly the same thing with another variety of basil that I'm growing and it's this Pluto basil. Once again, I'm going to be growing this indoors, but I'm also going to be keeping some for my indoor herb garden. And I think this variety is going to actually go into the herb tower. And then the third herb that I'm going to be starting in January is dill. I absolutely love fish dishes. It makes sense for me to grow dill. So once again, I'm going to be starting this off indoors and yes, it's going to my kitchen garden, but I'm also going to be growing some outside on the cloud garden. The dill and the sweet Thai basil that I'm growing indoors are going to be specifically for my cooking and the ones outside, if they bolt and go, if they bolt and start to flower, even better because pollinators absolutely love the flowers from dill and basil. I'm going to make sure to leave a list of everything that I'm growing in the description box below and I'm also going to leave you links so that you can get the exact same ones that I'm using as well. Throughout the next week or so I'm going to be doing some how to sew videos to help you get started on your journey. Thank you for joining me and I hope you've had a really good time. Hopefully I will see you again soon. Bye! If you're a container gardener, why not join my Facebook group? The gang is super helpful, always there to give advice. Feel free to share your container garden pictures and get some inspiration from some other people. Hopefully, I will see you all again soon. Bye.